Hello, I'm Chris Slisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore concepts that allow us to broaden our view of the world. You'll hear interesting topics, meet fascinating guests, and discover who you really are. Using the time-tested practices of astrology, you'll learn how to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Astrology, art, and spiritual adventure on Turning of the Wheel TV with Chris Flisher. Hello, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel. As you know, this is a show about astrology primarily, and um, I've been going through all the different planets over the course of the past year or so to give you an idea of what they represent, because the planets in astrology represent the characters in the play. If you think of astrology as a play, the planets are the actors, the signs are the costumes that they wear, and the houses are the stage settings. And we're going to get into all those as we go on further. And this is a long-term uh, uh, program that I'm talking about. I'm going to be getting into all the different details further on. But we're going to be talking about another planet today, which I haven't discussed in the past, which is the planet of Neptune. Now, Neptune, as we know, is the planet way out there. And these outer planets have a much, it's actually <laughs> over there, these planets out beyond uh, Uranus. It's the next planet beyond Uranus, between Uranus and Pluto. And these planets have a distinct, um, they represent a certain archetype or a characteristic of human development and evolution. And so in that regard, they have uh, distinct characteristics that bring them, and the characters that they represent, they bring them into the forefront of our daily consciousness. Now what I mean by that is they, it's not as if they're beaming out some sort of weird beam to us that we pick up and we feel this way. It's more the, the presence of them in our, in our universe as archetypal symbols representing a certain distinct human quality, characteristic, or theme. So when you have a, a Uranus going through a certain part of your chart, as we know when we construct a chart and the planets are moving, your, uh, Neptune moves very slowly. It's 168 years to go around the whole wheel of um, the zodiac, which it does very slowly. So it spends about 14 years in each of the individual signs. Okay. Uh, the sign that it rules is Pisces, and it's in Pisces right now. And so that's interesting from a data point because the last time it was there was around 1848, around that period of time. If you do your math, get your calculators out and subtract 168 from today's date, you'll see where it was. If we go back to that time in history, we will see that the influence of Neptune was very predominant at that time because it dealt with topics of spirituality. It dealt with topics of the unknown. And I mean by that, I mean like sort of the subconscious, the surreal, that which cannot be easily identified or seen. You can't reach out and touch a concept like you can a tree or a log or, or stone, but you can talk about subconscious in ways of moods and themes and sort of political climates and the way the mass culture thinks about the world and where they're going at the time. So it's very similar to um, an aura, I guess is a better word for it, especially with the case of Neptune, because Nor Neptune casts a certain aura over the, the human environment. And it's especially prevalent when we get into the signs of Pisces, which is where it is now and where it was 168 years ago. So for the next 14 years, it's been in, it's been in Pisces for a while. It's about six or seven degrees now. It's been in there for a while and it will be there. And what it does is it brings about a certain sort of heightened awareness in our collective consciousness. Now that sounds like a pretty heavy topic and a lot of, uh, you know, sort of academic verbiage. And what that really means is that Neptune represents illusion and it also represents delusion. And let me explain that further. All planets have a certain dualistic quality, much the way humans do. All humans are dualistic by nature. We have a left, we have a right. We've got two eyes, we've got two lungs. All of those things are dualistic in nature. We have got a front, we've got a back. Everything in our lives is based on a dual quality of, of the yin and the yang. You know, so we have, we have black, we have white, we have left, we have right, we have up, we have down. All of those uh, opposites are tangentially connected because without one, you do not have the other. You have to have black in order to have white. Black is the, uh, is the presence of color, white is the absence of color. So you can't have one without the other. So this whole quality of duality is pervasive in all of the planets that we've discussed to date. Neptune's 
two dualistic qualities are illusion and delusion. And the, I'll get into some of those details. Illusion is the idea of um, sort of a shroud of secrecy, a shroud of, it's kind of like when you watch an old Alfred Hitchcock film and you see the fog coming up and the screen is all dark and misty and mysterious. That is the realm of Neptune. And Neptune is the natural ruler of photography, film, fantasy. So novels that are built, uh, written on fantasy worlds, Harry Potter, uh, the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. Those are all films and books and, and, and uh, expressions of human creativity that represent the planet of Neptune. That's sort of the positive side or one side of Neptune that we, that we deal with. The other side of Neptune is what's called delusion. And delusion is when you're not really seeing things clearly. So illusion is seeing things clearly, but you're seeing them through a shroud of mystery, a sort of a, an elusive, um, surreal, fantasti fantastical kind of world and a realm that is ruled by movies, as I said, and photography, and that whole sense of, it's sort of like, you know, when you walk into a supermarket in the summertime with sunglasses on, you come outside and it's humid, and your glasses fog up, that's sort of the way Neptune is in that elusive quality. It's like looking at the world through rose-colored glasses as well. Same idea. So it's that sense of vision. It's that sense of perspective. And in that realm, it allows people to get into the realms of the subconscious, sort of the deep-seated ideas of the aesthetic value of what it means to be a human being. Neptune is actually uh, considered to be operating at a higher octave than Venus. As we know, when I spoke about Venus, and you'll find that on the other shows I've done, Venus is the planet of beauty and sort of that sense of harmony and love and the aesthetic quality of art and color and fragrance and smell. Those are all very sensual qualities of Venus. Neptune takes that one step further and delves into the world of dreams. And this is where you know, you enter into the world of dreams and things become surreal. They have, while you're in that dream, things may seem real, but they really are a sense of the surreal. There's this abstract kind of quality, sort of like a Picasso painting is very representative of what that elusive Neptune quality. And that's what I've been talking about with regard to one side of Neptune. The other side of Neptune is the delusion. And delusion is not seeing clearly. It's sort of that vague area where we think we know something, but we think it's just the opposite. We're not communicating clearly. We're not seeing what we need to be seeing. So there's that obfuscation of reality. There's that clouding, misty over of what happens and what should be happening. It's not clearly evident. And in that capacity, Neptune rules things such as addictions and escapism. Escapism and addiction are very strong characteristics of Neptune. They're represented by that quality. They have a real sort of unusual characteristic. And, and Neptune is very much the planet that deals with escapism. So when you're dealing with escapism, you're talking about um, hiding, you know, drugs, alcohol, addiction. And addiction, by the way, can be anything from chocolate to heroin. I mean, you know, let's get real. Or alcohol. Those are all the elusive qualities of what it means to escape. And escapism is very clearly evident in the planet Neptune. As I said, Neptune takes 168 years to go around the whole zodiac wheel. So in that time, 14 years of that time will be spent in each of the individual signs. And when we look back at the time, when uh, Neptune was last time, it's in Pisces right now, when we looked back at the time when Neptune was in Pisces last, it was around 1848, and we saw a real huge burgeoning of the esoteric arts, theosophy, philosophy, the uh, transcendentalists, all these very intellectual, sort of cerebral intellectual qualities were huge topics back then. These topics became prevalent in that era because of the presence of Neptune. Neptune has the ability to cast this deeper sense of exploration and the ability to delve deeper into the underground, the esoteric qualities of what happens beneath the surface. This is sort of that area of illusion. And it's important because when you find where Neptune is in your individual chart, that's where you find you have this sense of uncertainty. There's a certain sense of not really grasping reality clearly when you're in that spot. And it's very evident when you look to talk to people who have this in their charts, you will see, wow, there's really not this sense of clarity there. There's a real sort of sense of, um, of uh, uncertainty. 
uh, not real firm boundaries, and sort of uh, images and ideas are drawn from a much deeper well, sort of a psychological well. Because Neptune really does rule the psychologist. It's where we deal with the, the, the cerebral qualities of those intangible qualities. Remember I mentioned beforehand, we can't really reach out and touch uh, what it means to have emotions. We don't know we can we know what emotions are like, but we can't reach out and touch them. So we can't since we can't touch them, we don't have the ability to grasp them. So they are they're conceptual in nature. So therefore they tap into our into our intellectual uh, realm. So Neptune rules the the subconscious as I mentioned uh, and in that realm in, and Neptune, as you think about it, is very much of a, um, it's a sea-oriented. Neptune represents the ocean. And, the, and actually the glyph, or the, uh, the symbol that we use for Neptune, is the trident. And the trident is that spear that we see uh, oftentimes in nautical uh, representations. And this, the, the, the sense that water is there, water is the great equalizer. It's, it's sort of the, this vast pool of, you know, energy that circumvents the world and it presents us and people get involved in water, they sort of delve into water. There's that very deep, rich, emotional quality that water represents and it, it sort of transcends everything. And as again, I said, it's that great equalizer. And as I mentioned, all planets have dualistic qualities to them. So Neptune has this illusion quality, which is the positive side, which deals with fantasy, escapism, movies, theater, drama. All of that is, is, is part of that great realm of dreams and fantasy that comes about. Anybody who knows of Pisces will understand that they are very dream-oriented people. They're very much of artistic. They delve in the world of poetry and colors and music and art forms. These are all very Neptunian characteristics that are brought out in the individual chart. And we'll see that when you go through, and I will go through each of the chart, each of the houses and give you an idea what Neptune is like when it's in one of those houses. But you'll see it very clearly. And if you know anybody, and you know the intimacies of their chart, you'll be able to say, ah, no wonder that way. It's because they've got Neptune there. There's this, there's this ambiguity of, of, of responsibility. There's this sort of nebulous quality. Nebulous, in fact, is a very good word to describe ne uh, Neptune with because it really is that quality. It's that amorphous, intangible, nebulous quality that you can't grasp and touch. There's nothing very concrete about it. And because of that, that underpinning foundational quality of Neptune, we see a, um, this very broad sense of ambiguity. And what happens in this regard is that the two sides of that I spoke about, it gives the artist ability to delve into areas where most people wouldn't go. There's this sense of the fantastical, there's the sense of the, the subterfuge, the subterranean level of what it means to be human, which gives us that great sense of escapism. Escapism is a very strong word associated with Neptune. Of course, there's a positive side to escapism, which might be fantasy and books and movies and theater and drama. The other, po maybe the negative side of, of escapism would be substance abuse, alcohol and drug abuse and sort of getting lost in that ring. Delusion, you know, mental illness are all in those areas. Psychologists, people who have a strong placement of Neptune in their chart are very good when it comes to psychology and you'll see that very clearly. Now let me just go through the houses quickly and the way to tell where Neptune is in your chart is to contact me. Chris Flisher at turningofthewheel.com is my website and if you go there I can get you your chart and I will tell you exactly where your Neptune is. And Neptune is in everyone's chart at the time of birth. When you're born, we do a cast of this chart and we see where all the planets are in the chart. Everybody has Neptune. Now Neptune, because it is a slow moving planet, is a generational planet, meaning that it applies to a lot of people. And that's always the case from the outer planets. So from Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, those planets all have generational appeal. They are based on the time span that goes you know, depending upon the various planets, and you can get that information from me or my website as well. But Neptune has a generational appeal that spans a 14-year window. So in your chart, friends of who are you in your age group within a 14-year span are more than likely going to have the same uh, placement of Neptune in a sign, okay? So let's just go through some of the houses, okay? Uh, if we look at Neptune in the first house, we might find somebody who's very much 
um, very dream oriented, very sort of a little bit spacey. You might know someone who's like this in your world, who um, talks in abstractions, who deals with uh, sort of the surreal and, and fantastical, fantastical world. Oftentimes we'll find people who are great poets or who are, are artists who have it in that because it's how they represent their ego. Their ego is represented through the power of the ability to escape. And we'll find this very clearly there in all these people who have Neptune in the first house. And so there's this sense of reality. Sometimes they may not see reality clearly. And the same thing would be true if you were born with that on your ascendant. Now I told you about the ascendant, which was the, um, the rising sign. If you have Neptune in the first house or near your, uh, your ascendant or in the first house, you're going to be a person who doesn't have a clear grasp of reality. Now I'm not I'm making general statements here, and I have to do your individual chart in order to get the specific granularity of what's going on with that. But overall, you understand what I'm saying. It's a person who doesn't have a real grasp of reality. They may have elusive ideas about their own career, visions of grandeur, but they can also have the ability to be very intuitive. So we have to remember that Neptune does have a very strong intuitive quality. When we look at the second house, the second house deals with money. So. A person with Neptune in the second house might have a propensity for not really understanding the value of money, and they may, be, they may squander their money. They may be quick to give it away. They may put their money into fantastic uh, uh, endeavors that, pair, that bear no fruit. And this kind of quality, uh, when we're talking about it, can be dangerous in some case. You wouldn't want to perhaps give your 401k over to somebody who has Neptune in the second house because they may have this vision of the, how to do that. Now, don't forget, there's always two sides. So maybe they have a very good idea on where to invest that based on some sort of previous knowledge of where the society's going or whatever. But nonetheless, you see what I'm saying. Neptune in the second house can be dangerous because it's, um, its dialogue with money is somewhat uncertain and loose. And so therefore, reality doesn't enter into the concept of money. When we see Neptune in the third house, we would see it having to do with communication. So. What does that look like? Maybe you're a writer who writes a science fiction blog. Maybe you're someone who writes science fiction. Maybe you're somebody who's a film producer and works in film or in that sort of realm. Because there, Neptune would be very helpful with regard to sort of playing out to the field of the fantasy and, and communication. So you'd want to present um, the illusion of, 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 of uh, fantasy. So through words or dialogue, that illusion can be there. Oftentimes we might find politicians there because you know that they're so good with smoke and mirrors. If they're up there talking about their grand ideas, they may have a very strong, they may have a Neptune in their third house to represent the fact that they're talking about smoke and mirrors as many politicians do. Anyway, and then when we look at Neptune in the fourth house, Neptune in the fourth house, as you know, deals with the family. So the construct of the family may be somewhat skewed or a little bit off in that regard. Uh, if you have a Neptune in your fourth house, you may be looking at something along the lines of, hmm, what does that look like? Well, fourth house Neptune would be sort of an unreal expectations perhaps of your family, what they're going through, what you can expect from them. Perhaps your idea of what the family should be is different from your partner or whatever, or the home for that matter. You may live in a home that has a very sort of a surreal quality. You may have presented yourself in a very fantastic world. You know, people who have a strong Neptune in their fourth house may decorate their home in sort of a, a lush escape manner. It's an area to escape to, you know, sort of a, a, a hidden oasis is a good way of looking at it. When we look at Neptune in the fifth house, Neptune in the fifth house is a great placement for Neptune because it's the house of creativity and children. Neptune in the fifth house might look like uh, the idea of uh, being able to be creative. As I mentioned earlier, this might be someone who's involved with photography or film or theater. There's that whole creative illusion of trying to create this sense of of drama and sort of a, a sense of false reality is a good way of looking at it. And it's very much the case that you would see that there. Neptune in the sixth house is a great place to find somebody who does counseling. Counseling is a very strong quality of Neptune. Neptune represents the psychiatrist, represents the psychologist, represents the counselor, represents the astrologer in some cases. So it's not unusual to find Neptune in that spot of the chart as well. It really represents sort of your daily realm. If you have the sixth house represents your daily work and sort of how you help others. So the quality of the psychiatrist and the psychologist and the counselor would come through how you help others. It's the house of service. Whereas if it's your house of daily work, it might be that you work in an area of service for helping other people deal with their problems as form of counseling. Or perhaps you work in a 
in, in Disney World, for example, that may be a perfect place to find that. When we go to the seventh house, the seventh house is the house of relationships. So we might see Neptune in the house of relationships. You might have an idealized partner that isn't exactly what you want. Sometimes it may be disappointing because you're, you're always questing for that ideal person. Maybe you're always on this quest of never being satisfied because as you're trying to find this person, your vision of what is real may not be real. You may be looking for an intangible partner in your life and that is something that is is an area that you could look into but it's also good for being able to analyze people having a good strong intuitive qu uh, quality as well when we look at Neptune in the eighth house eighth house is all about spirituality and elders and institutions this also might be an area where you might find a psychology professor in a large institution at a school perhaps or you might find uh, someone who deals with uh, you know the elusive quality of um, a film again or a psychiatrist or a psychologist because the eighth house is about uh, a very strong spiritual component oftentimes we'll find people who deal with uh, you know religious figures will have a strong Neptune uh, because it's the strong spiritual quality so you'll find ministers and pastors and priests and rabbis and so forth in that area uh, they have a strong characteristic there when we go to the ninth house, we see Neptune in the area of adventure. And, Nep and the ninth house is also a very strong spiritual, educational, travel-oriented kind of um, position. So someone with a ninth house uh, Neptune might be prone to fantasy escapisms, you know, sort of these reality uh, and, or, or surreality, non-reality types of ventures, you know, uh, uh, fantasy camps and stuff like that. Also. Um, working in the world of education could very well be studying psychology or have a strong draw towards that and, and, and be a professor or a teacher of psychology. There might be an area where you might find that. When we get to the 10th house, the 10th house is the house of career, as you know. And the house of career would represent your occupation, sort of the kind of work that you do. This is where you would find probably more than likely the person with a strong um, uh, ability to work in film, to work in psychology. So you understand where I'm getting at. The common thread here is that sense of that amorphous kind of area that you, is not tangible, it's untouchable, but yet it deals with the strong character of the subconscious. This deep well spring from within us. And the word well and spring refer to water. And Neptune rules the oceans. It's the, it's the ruler of the water. It's, it's the god of the seas, as we know from Greek mythology. So it makes perfect sense that that would be there. And so those are the kinds of occupations you might find there or the type of people there, people who have a strong affinity for psychology, counseling, understanding. It's a, you know, Neptune more than anything else, I have to say, allows people to be very intuitive and tuned into the intangible characteristics. Sometimes if you're with a person, you've got a strong Neptune in your chart, you just inherently know what's going on. You can sort of pick up on that vibe. You can feel where it is and what it's bringing about in a person and where it comes from. The next house we move to is, is the 11th house, which is the house of groups and associations. So here's where you might find Neptune. If you have Neptune in the 11th house, you might find yourself working in a group of people of like-minded individuals who have in a, a holistic center, perhaps, or something along the lines where you'd find your work together was based on sort of the delving into counseling. So social work uh, as a social scientist, perhaps working with others to try to delve out these ideas. Again, it could very well be involved in film and reality, uh, unreality, surreality, so to speak, because of the fact that you're associated with other people in that capacity. In the 12th house, which is the house of transition, the very last house, Neptune in the house of the 12th, in the 12th house, might be indicative of a person who deals with sort of the exit game, sort of the last chapter of the life, who understands and has, maybe even has a, a certain fascination with transition, with death, with sort of the great unknown. This is a great area to explore. The 12th house, you know, is ruled, is traditionally ruled by Pluto. So there's that whole sense of sort of the transition from one world to the next. This is really the area where we leave the mortal realm of the, of the physical plane and enter into the realm of, the, of our next journey. So someone who might be here might be strongly influenced by the ability to be an escapist and to present a fantastical world. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that I had on this fantastic artist named Paul Lawfully um, several years, uh, about a year ago, and his two sessions are on the website. And um, he had Neptune in the 12th house, and he is this fantastic um, sort of a surreal artist who deals in the realm of 
um, the unknown, things that can't be tangible. He would bring in unusual words and connect them with his artwork, using physical words on the screen on his artworks. Fantastic sort of a construct, a melding of quantum physics and geometry and architecture and philosophy and the cosmos, all of those areas in that gigantic sort of prim primordial intellectual stew would all be represented by his artwork and we'd see it in that area. So Neptune is a, um, a very, very interesting character and what's interesting about it is that even though it was discovered probably around 1847, I believe, something around the era, I'm not quite sure about that, I'll get back to you on that next show, um, the, the actual date that it was in, 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 uh, discovered, but when we look back to people who were alive before the planet was discovered and we cast their charts and we see where Neptune was in their charts, it is always 100% right. And we'll look at it from famous characters who have a strong Neptune placement. We'll see it in people like Sigmund Freud. We'll see it in Carl Jung. We'll see it in the great, we'll see it in Salvador Dali. We'll see it in Pablo Picasso. People with a strong affinity for, and you see the two dichotomies I'm placing there. We've got Picasso and Dali, the surreal artists on one side, and we've got Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, the psychologists and the explorers of the brain on the other side. That is the realm of Neptune. And when you're in that realm, it's an intangible realm that deals with the surreal, it deals with escapism, it deals with illusion and delusion. All planets, all of us are dualistic characters. We are, a, we are constructed of a positive and a negative characteristic. We have these characteristics come to ourselves always and this is part of it. So Neptune has that representation of the two sides. One is the, delu is the illusion, which is that fantastic sense of escapism, that fantastic imagination, that ability to go down the rabbit hole as in Alice in Wonderland. That's a very typical Neptunian kind of story. The Wizard of Oz is another Neptunian kind of story. Then we have the other side, the sort of the lost and the, the lonely, the abject kind of addict, lost in a swirl of addiction and, and drug abuse and sort of this massive form of escapism. We'll find a strong characteristic or we'll find the ability of a transiting planet coming through a person's chart with that ability very pronounced in the individual chart when we find that they are immersed in an alcoholic haze and can't seem to escape it. If you want more information about Neptune in your chart or in your friend's chart, because I said it is a generational, it does span a 14-year span, so anybody who's born within a 14-year span is going to have it in a certain sign, and we can get more granular about what that looks like. And then, of course, depending upon your ascendant and the way your chart is set up, that planet uh, Neptune will appear in your chart in some area. To find that out best, the best thing to do is to contact me. Turningofthewheel.com is my website. You can contact me there. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. And I'm on the local television station here as well. And if I, I create a blog each week and I'll talk about it. We're coming into a very Neptunian time. And so we'll know that um, it is important to understand the value of it because it does have a very strong quality. Right now we are living in a realm of fantasy when we deal with what's, what we're seeing on television is it real is it not real are we being told the truth there's a lot of ambiguity a lot of nebulousness in the air right now which is characteristic of neptune so it's important to know where it is in your chart and more importantly where it is in your life today turning the wheel.com is my website contact me i can give you the details in all granularity and thanks for watching i'll talk to you again soon. Baby, 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 bye, bye.